Greetings, just a real quick video here to uh, remind myself some things I'm talking about with some guy online right now. Um, so basically we're into the same old trap where the Atlantic comes on with this article about how Fauci's awesome and vaccines are great and everyone who questioned them is a total Nazi or some kind of derelict weirdo who stays at home and does their own research or something like that. So that's, there was an article and there was a bunch of comments and I of course made a comment you know like something about how the public health system is still failing we're not improving or getting more access for more people or doing any of these things improving the number of beds we have available during an emergency to us any of those kind of things and um, instead we're online making snarky comments to each other anyway so this guy comes on there and he's just like well I you know he attacks me my source and so then i come back at him and just say well you know you haven't engaged with any of the content i've raised i've raised about three claims here so you haven't engaged with any of those instead you just kind of level this really dismissive ad hominem attack at me and my sources like maybe i'm a fox news guy something like that so you know, just dismissal so then he actually comes back and responds you know well I just trust the experts, you know, people with just years and years of opinions. I mean, years and years of research under their belts. And just there's this class of mystical experts, these oracles on high. And the knowledge that they have, we just, we can't even perceive it. We can't even question it or touch it, you know, even though they're engaged, they're invested in pharmaceutical companies and which is a conflict of interest and there are public officials determining health policy, right? So the kind of people that you actually do want to have scrutiny for, the kind of people that citizens need to have questions for, you know, but what he is saying is basically, if you're not uh, a doctor, a medical doctor, you don't have a right to an opinion. As a citizen, you have no right to have an opinion about whether or not our vaccine policy, vaccine mandates, people don't understand that when you're mandating people to take things into their body, that is something, right? They don't, they still don't get that, right? And they call everybody who's anti-mandate actually an anti-vaxxer. A lot of anti-mandate people are actually vaxxed. They've made the personal choice themselves to get one vax or another or whatever they've chosen. For themselves right what they're against is a government mandating that you would take this vaccine again when there's a vet when there's a virus going around with a less than one percent death rate so we're not really it's not really pandemic level anymore we're not there we're at omicron going endemic we have uh treatments even though they tried to deny you that so the, this the way the discussion went about ivermectin and now that everyone thinks it's just a horse dewormer and anybody who mentions it is vilified you right so we are citizens we do have the right to question things okay uh, just because somebody is in charge of transportation policy that doesn't mean that they're really an expert any more than anyone else right there may be a political appointee a political person who got it because of favors and political reasons they maybe aren't really any more of an expert than i am on transportation policy right but according to this person online as a citizen i just have to be wild sit back and be just stupefied just oh my god whatever whatever the transportation experts decide that a road should just go right through my neighborhood and there's no bike trails if they decide that i i can't question it because i don't have expertise in this field i'm just i'm just a normal citizen and basically, that's what the kind of the Atlantic, um, CNN, NPR, all these people that have really pushed the sort of Fauci, pro-Fauci narrative have basically what they are saying. The main point that they are making is that you, the citizen, are no longer qualified to question public policy. We need for you to sit on the sideline and passively accept whatever comes down at you right and then we're just gonna mock and alienate and bully any of those people that do decide to question things for themselves do decide to think for themselves they are now the person they're mocked as sort of like a derelict person with no job kind of at home in their mom's basement doing their own research right 
Isn't that strange? Remember when science actually encouraged research, right? Science encouraged questioning. Science is a method. Science is actually a method of discovery. And then explaining your discovery and checking in with others about what you've discovered. That's how, that's how science works. You know, it's a method. You, can, you have an, a, a, a guess about something and a phenomenon that we're all observing. And you say, hey, here's my, I have an hypothesis about this. I have a theory, right? And I'm going to test it. I'm going to go and do some, get, get some research, do some research and, and test this hypothesis, test this theory. Well, but now all your observations would have to be checked against the experts, what they're saying, right? And the experts are conflicted parties. They are not neutral scientists anymore. It's not Salk who's giving away the vaccine for free. It's a billionaire with a history of suppressing effective, cheap remedies in order to sell more expensive ones. That's, that's who is doing this to us. So people need to regain their own agency, their own mind, right? And if someone's saying something that you don't like online, if it's kind of disagreeing with the narrative you've had hammered into your head... Rather than just dismissing them right away, oh, you're just a dewormer, fox, you do your own research, you know, loser at home, you know. Uh, maybe look at what the content of what's in their comment. And when they say, hey, you know, early treatments could have actually been effective in this pandemic. Maybe hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, I, I, uh, ivermectin when prescribed by a doctor at the right time, with other things can actually be part of an effective trim, uh, treatment protocol, right? And I'm not a crazy idiot for saying that. I'm actually in line with the science and all you people that are freaked out about iver ivermectin and calling it a horse dewormer, you have been triggered. You have been the one who has been manipulated by listening to too much media and not thinking for yourself, basically. Right? But th since that's challenging to you, that upsets your notions about things. Uh, so anytime somebody says something, you just, oh God, Jeff, it's just dewormer, Fox News, you know? It's a hard thought to think that you might have supported a uh, policy and practices here in the last two and a half, three years that actually ended up in a lot of people dying alone on intubators because the medical system was completely failing. Not because of unvaccinated people. Not because of anything. Person didn't wear their mask. Nope, 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 nope. The system completely failed during this pandemic. And it has failed to make the necessary amendments to itself to increase hospital beds. What do you know? Why did we went before the next wave of Omicron, before the next wave comes, before Delta really hits? Why don't we go ahead and invest in some... Uh, hospital beds and, and get our capacity back up. But no, nope, not our capitalist, uh, pharma-driven, donor-manipulated medical system. It's not going to ever have an increased capacity of extra anything. It's not going to keep extra PPE around. It's not going to keep extra hospital beds. Because that's not how capitalism works. Extra stuff lying around doesn't make profit. That's That's... A burden it's a cost it's you know you have to move it around store it like, we, you know what's that let's instead fill let's create the award where we got some kind of high turnover and high paying you know just get that in there you know we don't want uh beds sitting empty that's the last thing a capitalist would want right but as a health system an overall health system why we why we have and vote for public officials is so that they can make these hard decisions they can say no we're gonna have a capacity of extra beds, whether or not Kaiser Permanente is making a gazillion dollars in this little room in their hospital or not, doesn't matter. Maybe this maybe this room is a loss for them. Who cares? They're getting so much grift from the uh, us anyway, right? They're just our premiums, and most people my age don't even pay high premiums, don't even use their health care because it's they can't afford the MRI, or whatever's next. So it's this obsolete healthcare system for me that I pay hundreds of thousands of dollars into. So there's a lot of excess, a lot of waste. And we, with that, they could use that to create more capacity to help people 
in it when the pandemics break out but no and no one's calling for that no one has questioned that no one has anything to say about that and then also the vilification of early treatments the reticence to take a look at hydroxychloroquine as a serious option and when combined with zinc and other things to say maybe this could save some lives no instead there is a really half-assed study that you know uses it in the wrong way and then everybody just starts repeating that study oh look it's it's not effective jeff yeah no it saved a lot of lives over there i don't know like uh, huh, why doctors that didn't have access to vaccines and other medicines were actually in poorer countries were actually able to save their patients using it you know but no not here we're not going to get any of that we're not going to get any much dialogue about that in the first world actually our media is completely controlled by pharma so social media has now been taken over by pharma joe rogan's been pushed off of spotify um these platforms now they're going after tucker carlson really hard right now right i'm not a tucker fan don't get me wrong tucker some rich kid who became a nice guy read stuff off on fox news whatever you know um <coughs> he is what he is but you know there's there's no alternative now there'll be it's just a mono you know it's just a homogenous just wall you know, late night comedy social media commenters news commentators rachel the rachel maddow's out there right all telling you that anything that you could do for yourself during a pandemic unfortunately doesn't work yeah no if you got some ivermectin don't don't if you got diagnosed with covid just wait till you get super serious and then come in and let an expert see you right let an expert help you after you're like super serious and already having like a cytokine you know super weird inflammatory response you know let it get to that level and then we'll treat you that's our that's our system and that's what everyone likes everyone thinks that is a great answer they think that they that my friends Think that when you get a COVID diagnosis, there's nothing you can do. You can't do anything. There's no hydroxychloroquine. There's no zinc. There's no ivermectin. Nothing will work for you, except maybe Pfizer has this new really expensive thing we're hearing about. Might be an early treatment. Oh my God! Even though we told you no early treatments, now that Merck is maybe about ready to patent one. You know, see, because ivermectin, its patent ran out a long time ago. It's nobody's making a million dollars off of ivermectin anymore. It's everywhere. So, so they had to vilify that, take that away from you, and all you saps in America <laughs> went along with it. All my smart friends. It's really bizarre, but that's kind of the litmus test of some, if something happened to you or not during this pandemic. If you were one of those people going around saying that ivermectin is just a horse dewormer. And if you were vilifying people that do their own research, you were duped during this pandemic. I'm sorry. You, you, you've been mind controlled. You've been warped by this. Okay. Doing research is actually a part of science. And people that aren't necessarily affiliated with the university or the institutions or the pharmaceutical companies... Right? People now are saying you have to be affiliated with a pharmaceutical giant with a grant from them in order to be legitimate. That's not true. A lot of things have been discovered by amateurs. Amateur scientists are discovering things every day. I encourage science. I encourage you to do science, to engage in science yourself. Don't be afraid of it. Right? Science is you asking questions refining what you think refining what you observe about nature how you uh, you know your conclusions that you're reaching that is science science is not an expert off telling people what they got to know that's not science that's the opposite of science vaccine bullying vaccine orthodoxy is the opposite of science get it <laughs>